Hello beautiful souls, this is Ona and today's topic is twin flames or more specifically twin flame relationships that feel super, super painful. And if you can resonate with that, then stick with me. I'm going to share my understanding of what twin flames are, what's going on when you have a painful twin flame relationship and some practical things that you can do to work through the situation and regain more peace in your heart. So I had a subscriber reach out to me and tell me about this twin flame connection that, that this person has and just basically asking for help, okay? So I'm just gonna read to you what this person wrote and I, I could certainly relate to it. I think maybe a lot of us can and then we'll go on from there. So they said, I'm having a twin soul connection problem. Mind, heart, passion, we're attached everywhere. I literally saw a fine web of silvery strings from my mind, my heart, my everything. They say, I saw our intertwining interlocking fingers and we deeply desire to be in sacred spiritual and physical sexual union. It was a soul dance. Oh, so precious. We've been together like that once only spiritually. And that was after all real life communication stopped but the love runs so deep. I don't know how or if I should cut what causes so much pain, but what is teaching me so much and what is so obviously divine. We talk telepathically, soul to soul, heart to heart via art and music, but she won't talk to me for real. The sexual pull came first, so maybe that's what needs to be cut or transformed so that she and I can have a pure, mutually beneficial spiritual connection. Oh, what should I do and more precisely how, what is going on and if that's you, I feel the pain. I have experienced a very similar kind of thing. And so here's what I'd like to share. First of all, let's talk a little bit about twin flame energies and what they are. So I'm just going to kind of tell you like my conception of it. First of all, there's some numerology there, which I'll get into in a little bit. And I'm also, you believe what you want to about twin flames. Okay. I'm here to give kind of a practical <laughs> ground level view of the situation and the advice. I'm really here to cut through the bullshit. My understanding of it here is that the twin flame is actually, it's not so much a person, it's more of an energy, right? And to me, twin flame energy is this energy of masculine and feminine coming together. It's this energy of creation, right? Embodied. And first and foremost, it happens inside this twin flame union happens within yourself. Every one of us has divine masculine and divine feminine within us. Okay. And these tend to not work very harmoniously together. Okay. So part of the big work of awakening is to learn to identify the masculine, the divine masculine, the divine feminine, discern what is actually divine in your masculine and feminine and what's not right because it can have a dark expression as well as a light expression then once you've identified or discerned where the actual divinity is in your masculine and feminine to bring those two energies together and have them work harmoniously okay it's a big 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 work right and this to me is first and foremost Anybody who's seeking or believes that they're in any kind of a twin flame union, this is the first work. This is the first work to have that union, reunite those two energies within yourself. Okay. So the twin flame energy is that it's that unified and therefore it also connects with this Christos energy, right? Which is this whole unified self unifying your lower ego with your higher self unifying yourself with the divine and ultimately bringing that down in into um, an embodied unification uniting heaven and earth together in a, in a physically embodied way so notice these levels we do that first for our own selves Okay, so we bring the masculine and feminine together within ourselves for the purpose of creating something wonderful, right? That's our inner purpose. Once we've achieved a certain level of that masculine, feminine, divine unification within, then we are able to 
come into union with another individual who has also attained that kind of union. And out of that comes a, a, a lot of creative, combined, shared purpose, right, for creating more beauty, more joy, more love, more harmony on the earth, right, embodied. This happens on a spiritual level. It can also happen on a material level, at least in part relating to the financial or material ends of things, right? So a lot of us are here to overcome poverty consciousness. Does twin flame mean that you, you have to find that one person? Now here's where I, uh, my understanding of it really differs from a lot of people. And if this doesn't jibe with you, then you're free to not listen. But my feeling is it's all, it's allegorical. And I don't personally believe that there is a particular individual that you're going to connect with that's going to be your, your other half. I, I just feel like you find that within yourself. Each person finds that within themselves. And when you're ready, you connect with somebody else who already has also found that. And then you can both resonate with that in a partnership that you can have a twin flame partnership. So does that mean you can have multiple twin flames? Personally, yes, I think so. Because again, it's the creative potential, right? And what I think is happening when you're feeling that intense twin flame connection and the other person doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Okay. There's a couple possibilities. One, they could be feeling it too and afraid of it. Okay, there's another possibility that, okay, you probably do have a lot of creative potential together, but for whatever reason, that person is not feeling they're not ready for that. They're not ready for that with you, or maybe you're not ready for that relationship. If, if you're in masculine and feminine together are not unified and or theirs aren't, there's going to be a disconnect somehow. And you may have an intense sexual connection that may involve both of you or one of you. Okay. Because the sacral chakra is all tied up in this. A twin flame relationship can be consummated, not just sexually, but through spiritual union, through creative work, right? And it doesn't always have to be sexual. The masculine and feminine, of course, is there for creation. And in the physical world, it happens through sexual union. That's an incredibly strong biophysical drive, right? That can get really triggered when you sense the creative potential between yourself and another person, okay? And especially if it's this kind of twin flame sort of potential. And, and so there's this tendency to fixate, right? There's this idea out there that twin flame energy is this intense, life-changing, earth-shattering, and cosmic energy. And so a couple things can happen. One, you know, we can have that intense feeling that, that comes in, and then sometimes we can fixate on that person, especially if we believe that that person is or may be a twin flame in our minds. Because remember, we are amazing creators, right? And what you think you will create. And if you're starting to think in terms of that, and I'm not saying not to, but um, if your mind has been fixating on that person and thinking about them in terms of twin flame, you're going to start creating all these amazing, amazing experiences that will be created because of the power of your own creative. You know, remember everything everything that you experience is a mirror of what's going on with, within you. And that includes twin flame stuff. Okay. Um, so I'm not here to discredit anybody's experiences. Okay. I, I think these experiences are as real as anything else, but you have to really, really understand that the, the energy has to be within yourself first and that the other person may or may not feel the same thing. You've got to decide, you know, is this going to be something that you just hold on to and live with and how is it affecting your actual life? Here's one thing to keep in mind. First of all, that sexual drive connected with the falling in love is a very, very potent energy. And historically, it's considered a dangerous energy. If you look at, say, the archetype of Cupid, 
you know, we think of Cupid as this cute little cherub, right, um, that shows up on Valentine's. But Cupid, actually, if you look back in ancient Greek myths, was not, it was kind of nasty. And he'd go and shoot arrows into people for fun to have them fall in love. And they'd fall head over heels in love and fall into all sorts of terrible situations because of it. It's sort of like love struck crazy madness. And, you know, if you read the 19th century poets, this has, this is more than just the whole twin flame end times, you know, ascension thing. This is throughout history. You hear about this and you, we, they used to talk about love spells, okay? There really is such a thing. There's a love spell and this could be triggered by past life relationships with certain people. It could be triggered by all sorts of things. Um, but keep in mind that one thing that can happen is you can literally fall under a spell and fall head over heels in love with a particular person. Yes, there may be twin flame potential there between you, but if that other person won't talk to you, won't acknowledge you, has no clue that you are feeling this and doesn't feel it on their end, you know, consider the possibility that there is something like that happening, right? And <laughs> then the other thing is that, you know, there are varying degrees of readiness and this is a free will planet. So sometimes a certain person will progress faster than another person, right? Which is why I don't believe that there's a particular twin flame that you're supposed to connect with. Um, I believe that it's up to us within to balance those energies. And when we're ready, just like in nature, when a female animal comes into heat and she's ready, she'll attract the right mates. She will attract the mates to her, right? Or when the male animal is ready, he will know and be and sense where the females are, but it's not going to happen until he's ready or until she's ready. This is the way of nature. Sometimes these may be legitimate, like potential spiritual slash romantic partners. Other times it may not be a good fit at all, right? And that it may just be you're feeling this. <laughs> and so I, I want to get down to the practical. So first of all, it comes down to self-love. Part of balancing these energies within yourself is coming to a place of divine love for yourself. And especially working with that divine mother and feeling that unconditional love, both from divine mother and divine father. Okay. And feeling your worthiness because honestly, a, a real twin flame relationship is not painful. You know, once you get to this point of balance and harmony, that's what it's about. It's about balance and harmony and love and pleasure and joy and experiencing heaven on earth, right? This is what it's about. If you're feeling intense pain, it, it, it's, that's, that's not a t real twin flame feeling. Think of it this way. There's, there's this phenomenon of falling in love and that's a natural thing nature does that so that we come together right animals have to feel that kind of incredible intense attraction because otherwise they might just either ignore each other or eat each other right a lot of times so it's built into the physiological experience of love so sometimes when we first meet somebody we're on this like it feels like we're on this roller coaster right and it can be intensely pleasurable to be on that love roller coaster it's supposed to be but if you think about being on a roller coaster it's really fun for the few minutes that you're on the roller coaster but then you get off right so there's this thrill it's a adrenaline pumping and it's it's thrilling but imagine if you were stuck on that roller coaster for a year for three years for five years right it would be intensely painful and horrible and that's what happens in these relationships when you have one that works you settle into this beautiful more like a, a, a waltz a ballroom waltz where it's smooth and it's gentle and it's harmonious and it's beautiful right and it feels easy okay and so if you don't settle into this beautiful feeling of waltz of dance of smooth beautiful harmonious dance and it still feels like a roller coaster after you know after six months after a year after five years 
it's time to reconsider this relationship. If, if you're feeling in pain and if you've been feeling this pain and ups and downs and it, it really just sucks your energy. It's an energy suck. And so what this is, is the shadow side, right, of, of romantic love, which is narcissistic romantic love, right? The shadow side of this, the, the Christ is narcissism. And we go into these, uh, you know, codependent or whatever relationships. Um, and that doesn't mean that the other person is a narcissist. It just means that we're kind of experiencing this codependency where you're feeling incredibly entangled and attached to this person and you can't let go. And so that if you're just feeling stuck in this kind of thing, that's what's happening. And so the first thing to do is to actually acknowledge this is a painful relationship. This is really, I'm not having fun anymore. And, and to also acknowledge, I can't let go of this. And, and so the first thing is to be willing, to be willing to let go. And even that, that may just be your first step is to learn to love yourself enough to be willing to even attempt the work at letting go. Okay. Because these can be so, so, so intense that, you know, there's, there, there may easily be a part of you like, like this person is like, I don't know how or if I should cause what causes so much pain, but which is, it feels divine. It feels divine. And there's a divine part of it that's, that is divine, right? But it's gotten hijacked somehow, right? You, you deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve abundance. That's what you're here for. And what can happen when you get sucked into these relationships, it, sucks away at our life force energy. It's diverting our life force energy, our creative energy into fretting about the twin flame relationship. Okay. You have to make that decision. Is this something that you want? Is this what you want to be putting your energy into? Or would you prefer to bring your energy back, come back into yourself, find that wholeness within yourself, find that love, that peace, that joy within yourself. Legitimate twin flame unions, they can be, you know, with a flesh and blood person, they can actually also happen on the spiritual, right? So the, the first thing is to find that place of self-love and really being, you know, I'm fine with myself. I love myself. And even if I never have a partner, I am wonderful and I'm happy. Okay. That's, where you want to be, but the, the, the steps to that can be really long. Okay. First step to that is to be willing to be happy, to be willing to be happy and to be willing to let go of any relationship that is standing in the way of you being happy. Then it's going to be cord cutting and learning to release. And at the same time, learning to love oneself unconditionally and learning to work with those masculine and feminine energies and harmonize them. If you're experiencing something like this, big hugs, because it's not easy. But one thing to keep in mind is that whenever we're really committed to, um, to ascending, to, to improving ourselves, right? It's life is going to test us. And if you are really feeling this twin flame thing, that means that you have this capability to have that twin flame relationship. You wouldn't have the desire for it if it wasn't within your ability to have that kind of relationship. Okay. So if that's the kind of relationship that you really, really want a relationship that is wonderful and beautiful and sweet and mutually, you know, where we're mutually loving, you can have that you really can and you totally deserve it. Um, but you gotta be willing to see the truth because a lot of times you're working through this and it's not necessarily gonna be that person. You gotta be willing to withdraw your fixation on a particular individual and really work on the energy itself. Sometimes it can be really helpful to work with people and there are so many practitioners out there that can help with this. I do offer work like this, but you, your heart will guide you to the right person. Once you're willing, then things are going to start to fall into place to bring you in contact with the right people, to help you with the right spirit guides, to help you with the, the right situations, all that stuff, the right knowledge, anything that you need is going to come forward, but you've got to be willing. You've got to ask for help. Okay. Many, many blessings to you. Remember that you were born to be free.